Um, so Trip says there seems to be a lot of moving parts with owner financing and lease options. That's true. Uh, is there a list of items or responsibilities that must be covered with the seller and then with the tenant buyer? If not, do you recommend a source or book or something that covers all the nuances and responsibilities? Um, in the first deal done fast, well, go ahead. There's a checklist in the first deal done fast Facebook group as to what you need to take to the uh, appointment, the perfect appointment checklist. Um, there's also a checklist of things that you need to discuss and clarify. Most of the like, uh, there's also a seller acknowledgement in the first deal done fast file that is like 30 different things that the seller says, yes, okay, I know we're doing this, I know we're doing that, I know we're doing this, I understand this. So yes, that's in the file section of the first deal done fast Facebook group. And also first deal done fast, I got the workbook ordered done and it is drop shipping to your house. There's a lot of stuff in the workbook that'll help you with some of that stuff also. But I could put together um, another checklist also that says, you know, make sure you get this, make sure you get that, make sure you get this. I can I can work on that a little bit more for you, Trip. No problem. Uh, the other thing I would recommend um, when we talk about it being covered with the seller and stuff, I tell my sellers as little as possible. Okay. If they don't ask, I don't tell them anymore because, you know, if it's overwhelming for us and we kind of halfway understand it, it's really going to be overwhelming for them if there's a lot of moving parts and pieces. But it's not that we're withholding information. We're just not going to introduce confusing stuff to them. That's right. We, we You don't want to leave the appointment and then feel like they've been drinking from a fire hose. I mean, you, you don't really, conduct you, you really a real don't. estate seminar um, in the kitchen. So, so great. Great example, uh, and there's some stuff out there, maybe some stuff we could even brush up on a little more, um, but keep that to yourself until you have to reveal it, right? Because we just, we don't want to overload them. I've done that before, and when you do that, uh, you'll take, you know, you may walk away and, and then say, yes, they're open to it, and then when you follow up with them, it's always, you know, and it's never, I changed my mind, it's, well, I talked to my cousin, and they got had somebody that got burned, or you know, some some. It's always some somebody else's fault. So uh, if you if you're uh, if you're hearing that, that that's the norm. Nobody nobody wants to just tell you, hey, I changed my mind. It, it's it's somebody else's fault. Um, another thing that you can think about when you're you're trying to decide, you know, what do I tell them? What do I not tell them? Find out what's wrong with them. Find out what problem they are having. Use their words. I talk about this in the um, number module three, talking to sellers. Shadow them. Find out what's wrong with them and fix whatever's wrong with them. Okay? And focus on them and their pain and their problem. And you'll get a lot further. If they wanted to know all the little intricacies and all these great things and they wanted to start professionally going out and doing lease options, tell them to call me. All right? They don't. They have a problem. They want you to solve it as quickly and as fast and as easily as possible. They have some questions, but it's just that they just want to double check some things in their head. 